So there she is. Go anywhere. Mobile milling and felling station. Got some rotten log padding for the bar of the chainsaw. So we need to do some reinforcing. Area where the belt is. <laughs> the beltal area. <laughs> the water picker upper. <laughs> nice one. We made it. Mud and all, and we even picked up a Rubbermaid lid from last time. So here she is, all loaded up. It's right to work. Okay, first cut with the new mill. Okay, so this is what uh, I'm really excited about is squaring up the logs versus the Alaskan style milling. This should be way faster. Well, <laughs> this log's too small for that. But we have a built-in 90 degree reference face, so you don't have to fiddle about with squares. Just push it square to that fence. Dog it in there. And you're ready to square up the log. Yeah, you know what, 
see what you call that before the end of it when you do clots. Oh yeah, clots too? Yeah. And now we've got sort of our work cut out for ourselves here because we do have a nice pile of cedar staged here, but there's lots of pine logs um, up on the hillside here. So I think we're gonna move the mill out of the way and we're going to see what we can do. Kai's got the cant hook there. Many to go. Good. Whoa! How far are we from our target? One foot. It well. Yeah. Hold your... we go. Away. So that went pretty well. Got uh, the first tree down the hill. We had to be careful kind of rotating it. There's lots of nice uh, new growth little white pines up there. So um, yeah, there was lots of sort of pivoting and spinning them around the trees. But I think we did pretty well. And uh, now we've got four nice milling, beautiful milling logs down here. We've got another section up just past those down birch. Those ones may be a little bit trickier, but uh, Nothing Kai can't handle. Yeah, first board. And yeah, I mean, it's like uh, bang on one inch. 
and no thinking required it's just like with the ratcheted uh, lift there every click is a quarter the 3 8 pico chain that we have on there is exactly a quarter inch kerf so basically just five clicks quarter inch of sawdust and a one inch board so that's pretty slick yeah i like it <laughs> what do our customers think what it, what wonderful it, <laughs> oh, pretty happy. amazing <laughs> nice tell you it was gonna run into the steel. Oh, what did I tell you? I don't remember. Two we'll stacks. Move, we'll move the steel. <laughs> it's light. Isn't it? Are you sassing me? Nice new boards. Oh yeah, big stack of 1x13s. Ooh. Hot off the press. <laughs> not hot. The only thing sweeter would be if this lumber was ours. <laughs> it's not. But there'll be more. Oh yes, there'll be more. Is a nice roll right there. So it started to rain, and I'm fully equipped with my old school Paddington hat outfit. Well, that's probably it for the milling today. Uh, not much rain coming down now, but 10 minutes ago it was just pouring, um, thunder and lightning. So we decided uh, probably time to call it quits. What do you think? Think I can do it? That's a heavy log. No You've already done the other ones. <laughs> Dave in his element. CrossFit! <laughs> okay, keep it going. Hey, CrossFit! Sit! CrossFit! Sorry about that. <laughs> it does, it does, it makes it look. I figured it looked like it was just a rock that line. We are back at the logging site, milling site, and 
The rain has stopped. It's a beautiful day. It's breezy, so it'll keep the bugs down. And for now, it's staying fairly cool. And we've got two logs already loaded up on the uh, logging bed, two new ones. And Dave's just clearing the limbs off of the last one to uh, get loaded from this area. Lifting with his legs, no grunts, all smiles. Look out! Oh, he trusts us so much. Is that your perfect laying spot? <laughs> After a long 10K run? He's like, I'm not moving. How's that feel? Feels good. You got your Crocs on, that's good. Yeah. Safety footwear. This is pretty good, actually. Right. Dogs under the log, of course. Can advance. <laughs> <laughs> <Rest. laughs> ah. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Couldn't have planned that one better. <laughs> and it came pre barked. Yeah. Let's roll these ones around a little bit. <laughs> Jump in. Yeah, if that's what you want. <laughs> that's what I want. So we're cutting most of the cedar into live edge bevel boards. So this will be installed as horizontal siding. So I just tip that shim under the log, but I've already moved it half an inch. So now it'll just be three more quarters that I'm going to bring it up. After we remove the saw kerf, we're going to be left with an inch and half an inch. So I'll do that at the other end as well. And I'll make this cut. the saw back and we're going to kind of tip the, the log back and forth cutting our way down so for our second cut remove that shim we're just basically touching the far side and we've got a half inch gap on the near side so now when the shim is under there I would go up three clicks. Once I remove the shim, then I go up the full five clicks to move up an entire inch. Same thing on the other side. Uh, 
And then I can make my second cut. We do have some butt rod here. Unfortunately, a lot of the cedars around here do have it, but um, I suspect it doesn't go too far into the tree. So we're hoping to still get some six foot boards out of this. We'll see once we get into it. Trying to maximize our yield here, even if it means making a few extra cuts on some somewhat rotten trees. And that's it. Next cut would be with the shim under, raise it three clicks, make the cut, remove the shim, raise it five clicks, make a cut, so on and so forth down through log. Last log. We're leaving this log because it's got way too much rot in the butt. So it'll be a cool post. One pillar. One pillar shack. Build like an A-frame with a center post. <laughs> That'd be cool. They will have plenty of 4 by 4s Need some help? Whoa! <laughs> Teeter-totter. Should I help him? Oh, nice moves. Like move. A little bit more, I think. Put it on that stump behind. Oh. Keep on rolling, baby. The pyramids. <laughs> How they were built. I don't think they had much wood. <laughs> you don't think it had been invented yet, wood? I just don't think they had very much of it. Mostly stone, wasn't it? Yeah, in the pyramids? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think they're all stone. But there was wood, obviously. You might have used wooden rollers, though. Exactly. <laughs> but they had designated rock chippers that would turn rocks into logs. Nice. I have to Google that. <laughs> Thanks, Donald. Rock. Rock logs would still be there though. That would be cool. I wonder if they are there. I don't know, I've never been. Me neither. <laughs> Were you going to say something? Uh, ice cream challenge? Yes. Ice cream and blueberries. While Dave was working hard, I was working harder collecting blueberries. Yeah. One of my favorite pastimes. I can eat this in like one gulp, but I'll share. Sharing is caring. How much do you want? A lot or not, not a lot? <laughs> hmm? Not too much. Don't want to spoil my lunch. This is your lunch. <laughs> That's probably good. Oh, there's just one little bite that you'll love. <laughs> there you go, blueberry. Is that in there? Mm -hmm. Nice. Chocolatey peanut butter treats. Peanut butter's not the perfect match for blueberries. No. When in Rome. What's that? When in Rome. <laughs> My dad would call this solar ice cream. <laughs> Frozen by the power of the sun. <laughs> so in a way, this timber has directly led to us enjoying this ice cream here. Because we knocked them down. <laughs> <laughs> we can make life of fun.
To sharpen, I found it's easier to take the saw off of the carriage that it rides on. So easiest method I've found thus far is just to draw the saw back so the nuts are exposed, it's still supported on the rail. You also have to take the saw off of the carriage if you want to adjust your chain tension. So often you're going to be doing that anyways when you're sharpening. Just remove the nuts from below. And the saw tips off. And take her over to the stand to sharpen. After I'm done sharpening, it's easy to just leave this carriage on the mill, tip the saw into position. We've had our logger saw mill about a day and a half now. Figured it's high time that we um, do a max effort lift on it. So we got this log here. It's uh, 19 inches in diameter. Documentation says it'll take a 20 inch diameter log so we're not quite maxed it out but we'll get close enough to get a sense of um, how well it does with the max size logs. So I'll turn it now. Now that I've got the this flat edge bringing the log in closer to the rail, it's able to take a little deeper cut this time. If I go an inch deeper into the log, probably going to run into that bar nose steering. So 20 inch bar, it's going to be possible, but it just means you might end up rolling the log. Um, a couple more rolls. Took a little bit more coercion, but I was able to get the log nice and tight to the vertical rail here to give me a 90 degree cut. So we'll roll her again. Getting a little easier now. Uh, but yeah, so it seems like uh, as far as the, the stated uh, values of a 20 inch log, um, yeah, I mean, it fits, basically 20 is the max. It fits on there, um, just enough room to get your dogs in. And um, yeah, seems to be no problem with the weight anyways. Didn't, uh, no groaning, shifting or anything from the mill. So yeah, beauty. So we just tested the max capacity of the mill and produced a whole bunch of beautiful, perfect 1x14s. Now we're going to test the minimum capacity. So we've got some really small cedars here. He's so cute and little. But it tapers quite a bit. And so the tip is really small. So with an Alaskan style mill, there would be no way to do a log like this other than maybe just to mill it in half if you wanted some half rounds. But um, because you need somewhere to screw supporting plates on, you just can't take a small enough top cut to, to make a log like this useful. But with this guy, we should be able to just slab off the bare minimum, just enough to square this guy up and get a 4x4 out of the center of it. It's about six inches here at the tip, so I'll be cutting an inch off and then should be able to flip it, set it to four inches. And I guess this will be the last log of the night so I can get a little swim in before dark. I'm in.
record. Speed record. <laughs> I could tell you were rushing. I was just trying to keep up with the uh, revs on the saw. I wanted to keep a bit of a load on the saw. I thought you just... were trying to race yourself to see how fast can I make a 4x4. Four four. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Just don't hit the dog. Don't rush so much you hit the dog. Yeah. Is that going to hit it? I don't think so, is it? Why did you do that? Just keeping the bar cool. Helps for these speed runs. It's like marathon runners with the uh, water glass. Yes, exactly. I was worried that looked close to me. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, Dave, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Hank. We're all good. <laughs> We're at six minutes. Oh no. What do these cost in the store? A lot. 20 bucks or something, don't they? A 4x4 four four cedar? Yeah. Yeah, easily. Nice. I don't know. Let's fact check it. <laughs> but really, what does it cost when it comes from your own property? Priceless. Priceless. He already he beat me to the punchline. Oh, sorry. Did you try to do it again? Nah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, we're wasting time. and 30 seconds with all the chit chat so if i got good i can make 10 of these an hour 200 bucks an hour that's not bad that's not bad it's a bit light for my usual rate but uh <laughs> i would take it still because it's such a nice setting yeah yeah butlers are getting a discount yeah <laughs> i mean client who shall rename <laughs> remain nameless Wow, and now you've got your bre bench press bar. Deadlift. What is that? Thrusters. One. Two. Three. Get on, Hank. Four. Five. Oh, watch your face. That's a nice looking four by four. You're darn right. Is this the nicest four by four you've ever seen, do you think? That is the nicest 4x4 four four I've ever seen. I'll show you what else I produced today. It's your butterfly wings. It's a safety vest. <laughs> <laughs> Caution, woodworkers at work. <laughs> you could probably put this on whose line though and they could come up with a lot more things. But oh, that's, that's all a I good come one. Send it to Colin Mockery. Yeah. Ryan Styles. Wait a minute, Colin Mockery? Is that, I just realized that that's probably not even his real last name. He was making a mockery of us the whole time. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, that's hilarious. Okay, nice. do your send off. We're all gonna get naked, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> but did you wanna summarize here? All right. <laughs> um. Big and small, it cuts them all. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Logosol cuts them all. Nice. Stack that on the one by fourteen just to give a sense of the scale of those nice big bad boys though. Plunk. Pink. Big and small, cuts them all. <laughs> Logosol. Is that a nice swim? And the uh, owners of this beautiful cottage have graciously let us stay here for the night because we've still got work to do. They're back at their homes, um, but we're in here cozy and playing Scrabble and Hank's out on the screened in porch just loving life and yeah, it was a good end to a great day. So thanks very much. 
for watching this video and if you liked it make sure you hit the like subscribe and give us a comment below thanks a lot and see you next time